Hey everyone, my name is Dan Adi, Engineering and Technical Sales for Detroit Speed, and today we're going to show you how to install our Exo Brace on the 1979 to 93 Ford Mustang, as well as the 1979 to 86 Mercury Capris. Now the Exo Brace is designed to fix a common problem with the Fox Body Mustangs with the upper torque box. It helps reinforce that. It's 100% bolt-in, however it can be welded in for high horsepower applications. And the best thing it does is when you lower the car, it gives you an additional upper link mount one inch higher to help correct your instant center when lowering the vehicle. Now the Axo Brace Kit is an advanced installation, so we do recommend that it's installed by a professional. Right now we're going to have product engineer Blake Tomlinson show you how to install it. From inside the vehicle, lift up the rear seat bottom to remove it from the inside of the vehicle. Remove the passenger side fold down rear seat back by removing the fastener at the side of the seat back. Remove the two fasteners under the center of the seat back at the transmission tunnel. Fold the seat back down and lift up the carpet to gain access to the fold down bracket bolts. Remove both bolts holding the seat back to the fold down bracket. Lift the fold down bracket up and remove the seat back from the vehicle. Remove the driver's side fold down rear seat back by removing the fastener at the side of the seat back. Fold the seat down and remove the screws holding the carpet to the seat back. Remove the four bolts holding the seat back to the fold down bracket. Remove the seat back from the vehicle. Clamp the seat back carpet up so it's off the floor pan. Use a knife to cut loose the floor pan insulation from around the seat bottom bracket on both sides of the transmission tunnel. Remove this material from the vehicle. Remove the driver and passenger side seat back brackets from the floor pan by removing the three bolts holding down each bracket. Use a straight edge and cut the sound deadening material next to where the seat back brackets were removed from the previous step from the floor pan. Support the rear axle under the center section and remove the lower shock bolts. Lower the rear axle to allow it to drop down. Remove the drive shaft by removing the four bolts holding the drive shaft flange to the rear differential. Disconnect the e-brake cables from the T-bar under the vehicle. Remove the e-brake cables from the body by removing the screws holding the cables to the lower torque box. If you have a four-cylinder vehicle, remove the e-brake cable bracket from the vehicle. Separate the brake line from the rear axle at the body by removing the bolt on the body bracket near the driver's side upper control arm mount. 
Place jack stands under the front of the pinion on the rear differential and at the axle tubes. Disconnect the sway bar from the vehicle if equipped. Spray the trailing arm bolts with penetrant. Remove the bolts from both the upper and lower trailing arms at the rear axle. Pry the trailing arms from the rear axle mounts and drop the rear axle out of the vehicle. Remove the rear axle from the vehicle. Remove the drive shaft from the vehicle. Separate the rear exhaust system from the front and remove the exhaust hangers from the isolators. Set the rear exhaust system to the side. Remove the upper trailing arms from the vehicle. Spray penetrant on the exhaust hanger bolts. Remove the exhaust hangers and isolators from the vehicle by removing the two bolts in each bracket under the upper trailing arm pocket. Remove the U-nuts from the trailing arm pocket. Remove the pinion bumper and bracket by removing the three bolts from the vehicle. Remove the three U-nuts from the vehicle. Drill out the pop rivets holding the brake line bracket to the vehicle. Remove the bracket and carefully bend the brake line down at the clamp in the tunnel so it's out of the way. Use this opportunity to inspect the brake lines. Use a punch to remove the remaining pop rivet from the floor pan. Carefully pull the fuel lines away from the vehicle to give you room at the floor pan between the upper trailing arm pockets. Locate the seat belt holes on both sides of the upper link weld assembly. Measure the gap between the welds on the upper link assembly. This should be one and a quarter inches. Divide this number by two, which should be five eighths inch, and scribe a vertical center line. Then measure three quarters up from the bottom edge and scribe a horizontal center line. Center punch and drill both marked locations using a half inch drill bit. It is recommended that pilot holes be drilled first before drilling the half inch holes. Test fit each side to the upper trailing arm pocket. If the lower hole in the upper link assembly does not line up with the factory trailing arm hole, you will need to flatten the upper trailing arm pocket doubler. This will allow the upper link well assembly to sit flat against the floor pan so the holes in the upper link assembly line up with the pocket holes. 
If no other suitable tools, shape a 2x4 into a driver to beat the flange to the floor pan. Make sure the floor pan has no gap between the sheet metal. Slide the left and right hand upper link weld assembly together so it is fully collapsed. Place the assembly into the vehicle so it sits against the floor pan and extend the upper link assembly so it reaches the factory link pockets. Install the provided M12 by 100 mm hex head bolts, washers, and nylock nuts through the lower hole in the upper link weld assembly and into the hole in the factory upper link pocket on both sides of the vehicle. Install two of the provided 3 8 16 by 3 quarter inch hex head bolts and washers into the slotted holes in the weld assembly. Make sure the weld assembly is tight against the factory link pocket by clamping them together on both sides. Tighten the M12 and 3 8 16 hardware. Torque the 3 8 16 bolts to 35 foot pounds. Transfer punch the two holes that were drilled in the upper link assembly to the floor pan. Drill both marked locations using a half inch drill bit. It is recommended that pilot holes be drilled first before drilling the half inch holes. Place one of the provided 7 16 washers on the 7 16 20 by inch and a half inch hex head bolt and place it through the hole drilled in the upper link assembly. Place one of the provided 7 16 20 flange top lock nut in between the upper link assembly and the floor pan with the flange side of the nut against the upper link assembly. Thread the bolt so it passes through the flange nut. Place the extra thick half inch washer on the end of the bolt so it fits between the flange nut and the floor pan. Use a wrench on the flange nut and tighten the hardware so the bolt passes through the floor pan. Repeat this procedure for the opposite side. From inside the vehicle, Place the doubler washers over the 7 16 20 bolts sticking through the floor pan. Locate them so they sit flush against the floor pan. Install the provided 7 16 20 nylock nuts on the bolts and torque to 50 foot pounds. Tighten the M12 by 100 mm hex head bolts that pass through the upper trailing arm pocket. Once both sides are tight, remove the clamps. Do not over tighten as that would cause the pockets to collapse. Use the provided 8th inch extended drill bit to transfer the four 5 16 hole locations from the upper link weld assembly onto the trunk floor. Drill the four locations with the 8th inch drill bit. The pilot drill would need to be drilled at an angle in relation to the floor pan. This is just a pilot hole location and will be corrected in the next step. From inside the vehicle, locate your four pilot holes. Verify that the pilot holes are lined up with the holes in the upper link weld assembly. If they look close, drill out the four pilot holes using a 5 16 drill bit. If the pilot holes do not look lined up, gradually step up to a 5 16 drill size while correcting the hole location so it lines up with the 5 16 holes in the upper link assembly. It is recommended that pilot holes be drilled first before stepping up to the 5 16 final drill size. Hammer the sheet metal around the four holes to sit against the upper link weld assembly. Place the provided 5 16 AN washers on the 5 16 18 by 1 inch long hex head bolts and install them from underneath the vehicle through the upper link weld assembly and into the vehicle. Place the provided 5 16 SAE washers and 5 16 18 nylock nuts onto the bolts for all four holes. Tighten the hardware until the floor pan and upper link weld assembly begin to crush and stop. Install the provided 16th and 8th inch body shims as needed between the upper link weld assembly and the floor pan around the four 5 16 bolts. 
They will take up the gap between the weld assembly and four pan where the four bolts were installed. Tighten all four 516 bolts. Use a snap punch to locate the center of the upper hole in the upper link weld assembly. With a 90 degree drill and a short pilot drill bit size to reach, drill through the inside of both upper trailing arm pockets. Using a unibit, drill through the pilot holes on both upper pockets to a final size of a half inch. Loosen the M12 bolts in the upper trailing arm pockets. Place the outer swivel link brace weld assemblies in between the frame rail and the upper trailing arm pockets. Install the M12 bolts back through the pocket and through the inboard side of the swivel link brace assemblies. There are six provided 916 SAE washers that you can use for shims as needed to take up any gap between the inboard frame rail and the swivel link brace assembly. Line the washers up with the hole on the outboard side of the swivel link brace assembly and up against the frame rail as needed. Tighten the M12 bolts to hold the swivel link brace assemblies in place. Use a snap punch to locate the center of the upper hole in the swivel link brace weld assemblies. Drill a pilot hole through the two marked locations. It is recommended that you gradually step up in drill size before drilling the half inch hole. Drill to a final hole size using a half inch drill bit. Place the M12 hex head bolt and washer used in the opposite trailing arm pocket and place it through the upper hole in the other trailing arm pocket from the inboard side of the vehicle. If the bolt does not pass through both sides of the pocket, you may need to open up the inboard hole in the pocket. Once both bolts are installed through the pocket, they should be as close to parallel to each other as possible within about an eighth inch. Tighten the M12 nylock nuts and washers on both M12 bolts installed in the upper trailing arm pocket. Position one of the four brace weld assemblies against the upboard side of the frame rail and floor pan on the same side of the vehicle as the installed swivel link weld brace assembly. It should sit against the upper spring perch bracket and the outboard frame rail. If it does not sit flat against the frame rail, you can use a flat file to remove any high spots on the frame rail. Holding the floor brace weld assembly in place, scribe the hole in the bracket onto the outboard side of the frame rail. Use a snap punch to locate the center of the hole in the floor brace assembly onto the frame rail. Spot drill a pilot hole location on your center punch from the previous step. Drill a 3 quarter inch hole through the outboard side of the frame rail only. Use a 3 quarter inch hole saw attached to a socket and extension in the drill to keep the drill away from the vehicle. Place the provided drill guide in the hole so it sits square to the hole in the inside of the inboard frame rail. Place a half inch drill bit into the drill guide with a socket and extension in the drill to keep the drill away from the vehicle. Spot drill a center point on the inside frame rail with the half inch drill bit. Do not drill through the inboard frame rail with the half inch drill bit. 
remove the drill guide from the frame rail. Use the provided 8th inch extended drill bit to line up the spot drill from the previous step on the inside of the frame rail. Drill through the inside frame rail and locate the pilot hole in relation to the center of the hole in the swivel link brace weld assembly. Drill a larger hole through the inside frame rail while correcting the pilot hole location to get it as close to the center of the hole in the swivel link brace assembly as possible. Once the hole is large enough, use a round file to open the hole so it is centered in the swivel link brace assembly. Place the drill guide back into the frame rail along with the half inch drill bit. Drill out the inside frame rail with the half inch drill bit, keeping the drill centered on the hole that was adjusted in the previous step. Remove the drill guide. Place the provided Allen head tapped crush sleeve through the mounting hole in the floor brace weld assembly. Install the crush sleeve into the hole that was drilled in the frame rail from the previous step until it bottoms out on the inside frame rail. The tap crush sleeve in the video is an external hex head, where the ones in your kit will be an Allen head crush sleeve. Measure the gap between the floor brace weld assembly on the bottom of the hex head on the crush sleeve. Remove the tap crush sleeve and mark the distance measured in the previous step at the end of the crush sleeve. Cut this amount off the end of the crush sleeve. When trimming the crush sleeve, you want the part to be a 16 to 3 16 short to allow slight frame rail compression. The frame rail will crush until it bottoms out on the crush sleeve upon installation. Place the provided 7 16 20 by 3 quarter inch hex head bolt and washer through the frame rail hole on the swivel link brace weld assembly side. Make sure the washers you added earlier are in the correct location to allow the bolt to pass through the washers and into the frame rail. Place the Allen head tap crush sleeve through the mounting hole in the floor brace weld assembly. Thread the crush sleeve onto the 7 16 20 by 3 quarter inch frame rail bolt and tighten. Rotate the floor brace assembly so the flange side with the two slotted holes rests on the floor pan. Center punch the two slotted holes against the floor pan. Use the 8 inch extended drill bit and drill a pilot hole through the floor pan. Drill out these holes to a final drill size of 5 16 It is recommended that the pilot holes be drilled first before drilling the 5 16 holes. Remove the M12 hardware and the swivel link brace weld assembly. Repeat this procedure for the opposite side of the vehicle. From inside the vehicle, remove the 5 16 nylock nuts and SAE washers. Place the provided doubler plates on the floor pan from inside the vehicle for the 5 16 hardware passes through. The hardware will fit through the inboard holes on the doubler plates. Reinstall the nylock nuts and SAE washers so they are loose on the bolts. Make sure you have the correct one on each side of the vehicle as they are mirrored parts. The slimmer AN washers will be under the vehicle and the thicker SAE washers are inside the vehicle. Place the provided 5 16 AN washers on the 5 16 18 by 1 inch hex head bolts and install them from underneath the vehicle through the four brace weld assemblies and into the vehicle. Place the provided 5 16 SAE washers and 5 16 nylock nuts onto the bolts for all four holes. 
Tighten all four fasteners in each doubler plate until the floor pan begins to crush against the upper link weld assembly. From underneath the vehicle, spot drill the floor pan through the bottom hole in the swivel link brace weld assembly using a 5 16 drill bit. Let the drill bit find a good location on the floor pan even if it opens up the hole in the swivel link brace assembly. We recommend high drill speed with light pressure, allowing the bracket to stabilize the drill and machine the irregular surface. This process will differ due to vehicle variation. Once you have a good spot drill location, Use a provided 8th inch extended drill bit to drill a pilot hole through the floor pan in the double plate inside the vehicle. Drill out the pilot hole using a 5 16 drill bit. It is recommended to keep all hardware in the swivel link brace assembly at least until you have an established a center point spot drilled on the floor pan behind the swivel link brace assemblies. If you have to remove the hardware, just remove the frame rail bolt. You don't want the brace assemblies to shift as they are acting as a drill guide to find a good location on the floor pan. You may need to remove the frame rail bolt in order to drill the top hole through the swivel link brace weld assembly as well as the M12 hardware in the top hole in the trailing arm pocket. Spot drill the floor pan through the bottom hole in the swivel link brace weld assembly using a 5 16 drill bit. Once you have a good spot drill location, Use a provided 8th inch extended drill bit to drill a pilot hole through the floor pan and the double plate inside the vehicle. Drill out the pilot hole using a 5 16 drill bit. Remove the remaining hardware holding the swivel link brace weld assembly in place and remove it from the vehicle. You may need to trim the outboard side of the factory trailing arm pocket to allow the swivel link brace weld assembly to fit properly. Locate all four of the half inch OD by five inch long crush tubes. Measure one and three quarter inches from each end of the two other crush leaves and scribe a line. Cut at the scribe lines on the tubes so you have four tubes that are one and three quarter inches long. There are four five inch long crush tubes in this kit so there will be extra material if you need. Clearance the sheet metal around the drilled holes under the doubler plates using a half inch extended length drill or die grinder with a carbide burr. You will need to make room for the half inch OD crush tubes to fit against the back side of the doubler plates. Place two of the provided 5 16 18 by 3 inch hex head bolts and 5 16 SAE washers through each hole in the swivel link brace weld assembly. Stack two or three 5 16 AN washers over the threads of the bolts followed by a crush tube on each bolt. The 5 16 AN washers will act as shims to get the correct spacing to take up the gap between the swivel link brace weld assembly and the back side of the doubler plate. Test fit the swivel link brace weld assembly with the hardware back into the vehicle. The two bolts will pass through the drill holes in the doubler plates on the inside of the vehicle. Verify that the crush tubes will seat against the doubler plates with the swivel link brace assembly bolted in place. The M12 hardware will need to be able to pass through the trailing arm pocket and swivel link assembly. If not, remove or add 5 16 AN washers between the crush tubes and the swivel link brace assembly. When testing the whole alignment, test with the hardware fully tight. From inside the vehicle, place two of the provided 5 16 18 nylock nuts and 5 16 SAE washers on the 5 16 18 by 3 inch bolts passing through the doubler plate. Tighten the hardware. You may need to prime the swivel link braced well assembly so the M12 bolt hole lines up with the trailing arm pocket. Tighten the 5 16 hardware in the 4 brace well assembly if they are not tight at this point. Reinstall the frame rail bolt and tap crush sleeve using medium strength blue lock tight on the threads of the bolt. 
torque the 516's hardware to 25 foot-pounds and the frame roll crush sleeve to 40 foot-pounds. With the swivel link brace weld assembly tightened in the vehicle, use an extended half-inch drill bit to line up the bolt holes on the swivel link brace assembly in the trailing arm pocket. Verify that the M12 hardware will pass through freely. Repeat this procedure for the opposite side of the vehicle. Install the Jounce Bumper shim onto the end of the Jounce Bumper. Spray the bumper with a lubricant to help install the shim. Push the Jounce Bumper into the rectangular slot in the upper link weld assembly. Carefully remold the brake lines around the exo brace so that the brake line bracket locates just rear root of the factory position. Use two of the provided quarter inch by one inch long self-tapping screws to mount it in the new position. If the brake line has corrosion, it may need to be replaced because it will likely crack at this step. Check closely for leaks and cracks. Carefully bend the fuel lines back into position around the exo brace. If the fuel lines have corrosion, they may need to be replaced. Completed exo brace install from inside the vehicle. Now that installation is complete, you can paint any of the raw components in the exo brace to prevent corrosion. Reinstall the exhaust hanger bracket U nuts back into the upper trailing arm pockets. Reinstall your exhaust hangers and isolators back into the vehicle. Reinstall the upper trailing arms into the vehicle. Tighten the bolts, however do not torque them at this time. Use the two upper link mounting holes in the exo brace as a tuning option once you have your vehicle back on the ground. Reinstall the rear exhaust back into the vehicle. Place the drive shaft back into the tail shaft of the transmission. If you have a four-cylinder vehicle, reinstall the e-brake cable bracket back into the vehicle. Position the rear axle back under the vehicle. Reposition the springs back in between the lower trailing arms and the body. Install the trailing arms to the rear axle. Refer to instructions to complete the installation. Now that you have the exo brace kit installed, your upper torque boxes have been reinforced so you won't have any failures in the future. Thanks for watching another installation video. If you have any questions, please call us at 704-662-3272. You can also send us an email at tech at DetroitSpeed.com. Feel free to visit our website at DetroitSpeed.com or any of our social media outlets. <music>